your Volvo has been involved in a homicide. Not all of my New York stories are film car related. You have automotive adventures, even without having to, you know, shoot with Ewan McGregor or somebody like that. Just owning a car in New York can be challenging. I have my own personal car, which is an unusual thing in New York. So having a car alone is an expense there. Where do you park it? You know, how do you insure it? How often are you actually gonna use it? Um, they're kind of a luxury. The first car we had, which I always looked at them as being disposable. Because if a plow takes it out or whatever happens or it gets stolen, who cares? So the first one was uh, Subaru Loyal, which became the first 2904 race car we ever used, mostly because we had it, we were gonna use a hearse and that fell through. So before we left, I'm like, I guess we're taking my car to the West Coast and off the Subaru went, so I had to replace it. And I had to get a wagon, station wagon necessary because you can't have a pickup truck out there. So station wagon, manual transmission, hard to find, dug up a Volvo 850 manual transmission, great car. It was 2000 bucks. So again, if it gets plowed, we get the insurance, go get another one. We drove that for a couple of years and actually used it in a few shoots for the company. Um, it was in a few different ads and a few different uh, movies as background cars. So it paid for itself. And the Volvo was also in What Would You Do? Um, that was one of the, uh, we did for the uh, testing, the heat inside the car. So it, it was mildly famous. Eventually, it was time to move out of New York. I sold creative film cars and I sold my half and we were gonna move to the West Coast. Now, New York has a way of saying goodbye. Things happen, I think, and, it, and I've talked to people who have left New York and sort of the same stories. Like, in the months before we left, I parked my car literally in front of my friend's garage, went inside, 15 feet, turned around, somebody stole my phone out of the front seat. It's, it's New York going, you know, have a good day, get out of here. But New York's ultimate goodbye involved the Volvo. I was at a shoot and it ran long and I had driven the car there because it was kind of out of, out of the area and uh, came back and it was like one in the morning. And parking in New York is a sport unto itself because there's alternate side parking. If you end up on the wrong side in the morning, you're gonna get a massive ticket because you blocked the garbage trucks or whatever, or the street cleaners. Usually you have to park miles away from your house. But I found a parking spot right in front of the apartment next to ours. I'm like, gold. And it was late. I'm like, perfect, park, go inside. And it's an early shoot the next morning. And I was gonna take the subway to that. So I get up in the morning, go outside, walk by the car, and head to the subway. And it's just instinctual. It's a thing that you just have to do as out of habit in New York, is you look at your car, just look at see if there's a ticket on it. And I knew I parked it, I nailed the parking, I, I knew the rhythm of our streets, I knew it was fine, but I looked anyway, and sure enough, there's a ticket on the car. Parking tickets in New York are more than speeding tickets in Illinois, ask me how I know. So you don't wanna pay sp these parking tickets. I'm thinking, great, another $100, $200 parking ticket. I go over to it, and as I'm reaching over the windshield, I look across the car, and it's parked on the left side of the street. It's a one-way street. And I looked across the car, and there's apparently like a crime scene being cleaned up. It's Brooklyn. It's not unusual. There's some tape. There's like an old cop who's obviously like the last guy out, and he's picking things up. And I, I pick up a ticket. I'm looking at him. He looks at me, and he goes, is that your car? I'm like, yeah. He's all, read the note. Like, the note. Okay. So I take the piece of paper, open it up, and it's not a ticket. It's, it's like the world's weirdest ad lib, right? It's just words and blanks that are filled in. And it's like, your Volvo has been involved in a homicide. Really? <laughs> so I'm like, this is interesting. Officer, what happened to my car? Call the number. Call the number on the note. So I hadn't really looked at the whole car yet because I was just walking by. 
I walk around the other side of the car, the street side of the car, and the front fender is caved in and the wheel has been bent, like the tie rod's been bent in. And like this cops, he wants nothing to do with it. He's obviously, his shift is over. And he's just like, read the note, call the number, it'll be okay. I'm like, all right, what happened? So I call the number and they're like, well, the report's not in yet. I'm like, that's great. Can you tell me what happened to my car? Is it evidence? I mean, is it gonna be impounded? What, what is going on with my car? I finally get an answer. I get the police report. What had happened was apparently, according to the police report, maybe 15, 20 minutes after I parked the car, a gypsy cab. Now gypsy cabs in New York are privately owned, usually used town cars. They're not legit taxis, but we use them all the time. So a gypsy cab pulled up and was going to let its passenger off in front of the apartment and have like, a, these, these security cameras are useless. Anybody who's ever been robbed and has a security camera knows they intentionally make them have like three pixels at night. Like there's no way, what's the point of it? There's, you can't see anything. So apparently they saw kind of what happened. The driver pulled up, the passenger in the back seat put a gun to his head and blew his brains out, G jumped out of the car. Apparently because he didn't have cab fare. We don't know. And the corpse at that point, still in gear, then drives his car into the Volvo. So the Volvo stops it on the side of the road. So a corpse hit my Volvo. I know that sounds really crass and it's kind of, you know, like a man died and that's horrible, but it's, in New York, it's, there's a certain edge to everything you live through and you're like, uh, yeah, of course, you know. And I did learn more about it. So the police report went into a little bit of depth. We had to do a little investigation. The guy was an immigrant. He'd been in the country for about three years, sending money back to his family in Nigeria or something like that. And that's horrible. And he was like 41. And it's tragic. But stuff like this unfortunately happens in a city of, you know, 10, 11 million people in that area. And it just happened to happen to my Volvo. So I was part of that New York experience for a short period of time. So the next step is, what do I do about the car? So I was like, okay, uh, call my insurance company. And you don't get full collision in New York. You don't get the full thing because that'll cost you a fortune. Just if you call your insurance company and say, I live in New York City, they just kind of giggle and they add a zero or maybe two to whatever the number it is. So you get basic insurance. And I didn't have any you know, thought that they were gonna pay for the repairs. I'm like, weirdly enough, insensitively enough perhaps, the guy's insurance should fix my car. So I call up my insurance company and it's, it's USAA and they're the best. They're, it, they're down in San Antonio and they're one of those insurance companies you call up and a human being answers and they're like, well, how are you doing? Everything okay? So I call up, I'm like, hi. Um, I need to make a claim of some sort, but I'm not sure how to do this. And she, and the lady's like, oh, what, what happened? I said, tell her the story. I'm like, a dead man drove his car into mine and there's this pause. And she's like, excuse me? I'm like a recently deceased man drove into my car. And she's like, I haven't heard that one before. I'm like, I'm like well, I really hope you've never heard this one before. And she's like, I have to get my supervisor. So I give him the same story over again and the same pause, like, well, sir, um, not quite sure how to handle this one. I'm like, well, I'm sure that's not in your manual that you're looking at right now. Like, hmm, 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 you know, collision, ran the light. Ah, corpse hit the car. Here it is. I'm like, well, what, what's my, what's the procedure for this? And they're like, well, we have to kind of look that one up. I'm like, good, we'll give you a call tomorrow. I'm like, great. Meanwhile, I've taken the car to one of our film car shops and we're getting it we're getting it repaired, everything's fine. And I get a call the next day. And there, sir, uh, we have, uh, we have a um, course of action for you. I'm like, great. I'm like, so did you call his insurance company? Because I got the police report and it shows you his, you know, all the information with the car. We found out his insurance company, they contacted his insurance company. And they're like, well, in the state of New York, he's not liable for the accident, so his insurance company will not pay to repair your car. Okay, I go, then who does, or is that it? Are we done? And they're like, no, uh, you have a, a, 
you have a path of recourse, uh, you have to get the insurance from the man who shot him. Oh, okay, that, that makes total sense. So what you're telling me is I have to find a murderer and get his car insurance number and then we'll be square. And without missing a beat, they're like, that's, that's correct, sir. That's what you have to do. I'm like, okay. Then, you know, your imagination starts going. So here's what I thought would, would happen. I was gonna go deep undercover in Brooklyn's underworld for like two or three years, you know, and be walking around in a ripped denim jacket and my hair growing long. And I'm like going to every seedy bar and talking to folks and becoming part of the underground community. And, and like two years later, you know, I'm at, I'm at the back of some seedy bar in downtown. I'm like, this guy goes, oh yeah. I shot this guy and, and then uh, I ran. I'm like, really? Was that, was that a parade place in Brooklyn? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, uh, did that car hit a Volvo? Yeah, I think it did, it's hilarious. And then I pin him up against the wall and I hold him there and I'm like, give me your car insurance. Everything's great and like, you know, cut to the credits and everything wins, but I didn't do that obviously. So I just fixed the car. Who wants a free carbon fiber ring? Well, right now, Patrick Adair Designs is giving away a free carbon fiber ring with any purchase if you use the code VINWIKICF at checkout on their website. You can find them at the link in the description below. You can also follow along on Patrick Adair's YouTube channel. You've seen him here telling car stories, but over there, he documents his journey in entrepreneurism and some of the amazing things they do to create rings out of the most interesting materials from Earth and from space. So check them out now and thank them for their support of VINWIKICF.